In this video, we're going to take a look at three advanced topics that you'll want to incorporate into your search techniques. We're going to take a look at adding in additional data fields, advanced map search techniques, and advanced sorting capabilities. We'll start this video on the residential search page. There are times where you'll need to search for very specific types of property horse property, properties with a specific view, properties in a certain condition. And these data fields cannot be found here on the main portion of the residential search page. To add those data fields into your search capability, use the slide bar on the right side of the page to scroll down below the results button. Here you'll find the additional fields add or remove option. The first thing you'll notice is that my list doesn't look anything like your list. In fact, your list may not have anything added to it already. That's because this area of matrix is customized to the user. To add or remove data fields to your search page, click on the Add Remove button. Data fields that are available to you are in the left box, and the fields I've already selected are in the right box. To quickly go to a specific part of the list, use the search tool to type in what you're looking for. In this example, I want to add in the listing agent's name, their brokerage office, and the office phone number. I can use my control button on a PC or the command button on a Mac to select multiple items at one time. When I'm done, I can click the Add button between the two boxes, and those three data fields have been added to the bottom of the list. And when we use the Back button in the lower left, and scroll back down the main residential search page, you'll find those three items at the bottom of the list. Should you want to rearrange your list, simply return to the Add Remove button, Identify the data field you want to move and use the Move Up, Move Down options here on the right-hand side. One click for each position you want to move up the list. To return to the search fields, click the Back button on the lower left. And once again, if we scroll down, we'll find that data field has been moved up four or five spots. Note that there are different searches for different property types and that each property type will need to have its own additional fields added or removed. Here's a list of the most common additional data fields you may want to consider adding to your searches. You can pause the video at this point to write these down, or perhaps take a screenshot of your screen and input them at a later time. Let's take a look at some advanced search techniques that you can use for unique property searches. I'll click on the Map tab here in the upper right corner to access the map. A quick review of the options available to you within the Google Map, starting in the upper left-hand corner, include different types of map views. Right now we're on what I would call the street map option, but I can click to satellite view, and I can remove the labels if I want to. Note, on the far right-hand side, I have the zoom in, zoom out buttons and I can hold my left mouse button down and drag the map to the area that I want to search. We'll zoom in a little closer using the plus sign, and we'll switch back to the map view once again using the options in the left corner. Here on the top toolbar just below the criteria tab, you'll find four options for drawing on the map. By clicking them, I can hold my mouse button down and draw a circle. Here's the square or rectangle. Once again, I'm holding my left mouse button down and dragging to expand the shape. 
The third option is the polygon. And remember, in this technique, you do not hold the left mouse button down. You simply provide clicks each time you want to change direction, always returning to where you started. The fourth option is the freehand polygon. In this option, you do hold your mouse button down and now move your mouse to draw your shape, always returning to where you started. If you'd like to remove a shape, simply place your mouse on the red dot for that shape where you'll have the delete shape option. Also note that you can draw a shape within a shape. I'll click on the circle option. I'll move to the existing shape and draw the circle inside. If I wanted to exclude that area within the first shape, I simply move to the red dot and click exclude the shape. The fifth item over on the toolbar is the broom, and this allows you to clear all shapes from the map. The sixth option available to you is layering. Layering allows you to put lines or zones on top of the map. I'll click out a little bit so you can see that one a little better. These are zip codes. You can add up to six different line or zone sets at one time. But I don't recommend it as the map tends to get cluttered. You'll note in this example that the parcel and flood zone options are in red. And we have a zoom in red option right here. That means you need to use the plus sign to zoom into the map. Now reopen the layering and parcels and flood zones are now available to you. Layering also allows you to add characteristics to each parcel. You can also apply trends or statistics to your map. I'll need to zoom out here so we get a, a little bigger, broader search. The point of interest drop down menu allows you to add in neighborhood attributes. If you're looking for a specific property, use the jump to address option. Note that you can click on any property and will give you a quick ownership um, and address verification. And the lot dimensions option will lay down the linear square feet along each side of the property line. Let's take a look at how to create a saved map template that you can use over and over again for different clients. In this example, we'll use the Silver Creek Country Club as our map template area. Locate the Country Club on, on the map. And in this case, I'm going to use the polygon option from the cutting tools at the top. I'll use the tool to outline the search area, clicking each time I need to change direction. And always returning to where I started my shape. Moving down to the lower left corner of the screen, we'll use the Save button and we'll save this as a new saved search. I'll give it the name Silver Creek Map Template and I'll use the Enable as a Favorite Search on the Dashboard option to easily retrieve this search at any time. Click the Save button here in the lower left 
And when we return to the dashboard here on the upper left corner, and I go to my favorite searches area, there's the Silver Creek map template. If I want to use that map template for a new search, I simply click on the title. I'm currently on the results tab return to the criteria and enter in what I'm looking for in the Silver Creek area and click results. These are the seven active properties within the map template we used before. To save this search for a particular client, return to the save button in the lower left corner. The system will ask you whether or not you want to update the map template file or create a brand new save search, which is what I recommend. We'll give this one a new title, Silver Creek Actives. Once again, we'll enable it as a favorite search on the dashboard, and once again, click Save. When we return to the dashboard and to the favorite searches area, the map template is still right there, and here's the new save search Silver Creek Actives that use the template for its creation. Let's move on to advanced sorting techniques. In this example, I've set up a search for active, contingent, and pending listings of single-family homes with three bedrooms, two baths within the city of Santa Clara. If I hit the results button, the system defaults to an agent one-line display. And in this case, it's being sorted by price in an ascending order from smallest to largest. Remember that you can sort on any column simply by clicking on the column header. In this case, let's sort by square footage. Clicking it once goes in an ascending order from smallest to largest. And clicking it again changes it to a descending order from largest to smallest. But let's say I want to sort this in multiple ways at one time. To accomplish that, we'll move to the bottom left corner of the results and click on the Refine button and then choose Sort. Now let's say we wanted to sort this first by status and then by price. Using the search tool below the available fields box, I'll type in the word status, click on it, use the add button to put it into the sort fields option, and I'm going to move it up the list to the very top, so that will be the first thing it sorts by. If I want to remove one of the items from the sort field, I simply highlight it and use the remove button between the two boxes. In this case, the results will be sorted first by status in an ascending fashion and then by the current price also in an ascending format. If I want to change that to a descending format, I simply double click and you'll see that the sorting order has been changed. When I'm done, I come down to the bottom left corner, click the OK button, and you'll note that the list has now been sorted by the status here on the far left hand side and then within each status the price in a descending order. If you would like to apply this sort order to all searches on the agent one line display simply move over to the gear icon at the end of the toolbar open it up and select the first option to set the current display sort order and count per page as my search starting default.